stall him or we're all dead by Jay Wilburn. Stan Clegg was not cool under pressure, so he may have been the worst one for the other three guys to send out front, send it to send out front to deal with Donald Brim. Um, one thing Stan did not did have going for him was that he was smarter than the others in the crew. Um, let's say it was a bit of a stretch to call them a crew. Uh, he supposed that's what you were once you planned a heist. If he, if he was really smart, let's put a comma there, he would have never agreed to rob Mr. Brim's storefront and warehouse tonight, tonight or any night. But among the four guys who started this thing, Cam, Ty, and Simp were utter morons. All right, Kevin says, just listening to Jenny Rugby's uh, first crime book about the sociopath police, Leona, who stands behind a series of bank robberies. She herself investigated a very interesting character. That's good stuff. It's hard to go wrong with uh, really good crime fiction. Like, uh, There's just something about that that uh, in a really talented author can just make almost any premise work, and they can take old premises and do something new with them. I'm a big fan of uh, a number of crime writers' uh, work, including some people I know personally. All right, Stan, that was it. He had to give the other guys... All right, Stan... Uh, the last person Stan ever wanted to see tonight out here in front of this place just called him by name. All right. This was it. He had to give the other guys time to vacate the back room. He hoped they moved fast, but they needed to cover their tracks too. God, he hated having his life in their hands. You're Stan, right? Stan's jacket was too thin for this chilly night. Three... Okay, let's say... Why did... Why did... This guy. No, let's not say why did. How could he know Stan's name? This was a nightmare. Okay. Moving right along here. Stan's jacket was too thin for this chilly night. Three days ago, it had been 81 degrees. Tonight, the low was 22, and it was already uh, just posted the Goodreads page of the book uh, to you in a whisper. The good deal. Um, how, how could he know? Okay, Stan's jacket was too thin for the chilly night. Three days ago, it had been 81 degrees. All this is in Fahrenheit, of course, Kedman. I hope that's uh, not confusing. The low was... The low was going t tonight. The low was going to be 22, and it was already 28. Stan had asked Alexa four times. Stan had asked Alexa, say about the forecast, four times before. Let's well, I've already said forecast. I don't want to be four four. Um, half a dozen times before leaving his house. I haven't added a few things in here because the the, uh, the story evolved into something different than I thought it was going to be at the beginning. Uh, yes, sir, Stan, Stan said. He watched his breath rise and vapor between them with more fascination than it really deserved. His teeth tried to chatter, but he stopped them. Cold night, isn't it? Don Brim. Don Brim. The big boss 
just stared at the young man. Stan knew he must know. Why the hell else would he be standing out here in the dark cold? Why else would he already know um, Stan's name? Don wore a thick coat and fur-lined hat pulled down over his ears. It was that kind of, it was it was the kind of coat that would easily hide a gun. What the hell are you doing out here in this cold in this cold at this hour, Stan? That was a great question, wasn't it? Um did guys like Donald Brim ask questions they didn't already know the answers to. Was he giving Stan enough rope to hang himself? Guys like Don did lots of things to people, but hanging, all right, there didn't need to be a comma, but hanging wasn't usually on the list. All right. Stan needed to answer. Stan needed to answer him. All right, let's do that. Um, I just wonder over the title of the die is cast, wouldn't it be dice? Or do we, the word die have another meaning? There you go. Maybe. All right. Stan needed to answer him. Robbing the place was the most obvious answer, but he couldn't lead with that. I, uh, Stan took out his phone like he was checking a message, but realized he was about to look up the temperature again. It was just a nervous reflex, apparently. Don's eyes, uh, it was just a nervous reflex he'd developed tonight, apparently. Don's eyes were on him, and to Stan, they felt heavier than the cold. What if Mr. Brim had thought Stan was reaching for a weapon? He was not a guy to be messed with. So, why had Stan joined in robbing him? Joined in robbing a guy like this. Oh, uh, I was told, um, you got a message too? From who? All right, would Don Brim say who or would he speak properly as in whom i'm going to leave it who even though that's not grammatically correct you got a message too from who uh, stan met brim's severe eyes he couldn't read whether this was legit curiosity or some level of anger don brim had been born in eastern europe during the cold war he had a different last name back then stan had heard the stories more than once but couldn't remember any of them um let's say in that cold, dangerous silence. All right, there we go. Don ha had almost zero accent. Do I want to make that a new paragraph? No, I think it's the same idea. Die is singular, dice is, is two or more. All right, Don had almost zero accent. His voice was almost Midwestern flat compared to the New York and Jersey guys that made up a lot of the organization. But the man still had that abrupt East Europe way. Uh, let's make that Eastern. That abrupt Eastern European. We'll just make that appropriate since it's um, narrative. 
abrupt Eastern European way of sounding pissed off even when he was happy or giving you a compliment, kept Stan on edge the few times he was around the man. Say, apparently, apparently enough times for Don to remember him. Stan looked down at his phone again, but saw he had the weather app open. It was now 25 degrees, but clear skies. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I think I got it from a burner. You don't use burners. Let's say you don't use burners yourself, kid. All right. Was this another test? If he'd said he used a burner himself, that would if he said let's say if he'd Yeah, sorry, I'm fixing something here. If he'd said he used a burner himself, then he could claim to have thrown it away later. No way before coming here. Then he wouldn't have to prove anything. Oh, ah, uh, sure, sometimes. I'm not all that important, though, so mostly I get stuff on my regular phone. Don actually laughed at that. Well, we all have our parts to play, and they're important in the end. Thank you, sir. Stan's head started to turn back to the door, but then he stopped himself. It might clue Brim in that something was amiss. Something was amiss in there. I didn't realize how much cleaning up I was going to have to do here to make the beginning of the story match the end of it. Are you going in or what? Stan made a show of trying the door, and of course it rattled in its frame. He wasn't able to snap the deadbolt behind him, but he did turn the latch lock before stepping out. He was a little more clever than the other three thieves. Um, all right. I was going to mention that that's not the kind of lock that you have on, on doors in uh, businesses, typically. Especially if you're talking about a warehouse kind of situation. But um, I'm using a latch lock on there anyway, uh, for the sake of the story. Stan didn't meet Mr. Brim's eyes as he said, I didn't bring my keys. Stan didn't meet Mr. Brim's eyes as he lied to the big boss yet again. All right. Usually it's best not to mention in a dialogue tag that somebody's lying. You just show that they're lying. Um, but in this case, I, there's some confusion here. I didn't want it to make, make it look like Mr. Brim was saying this line. Uh, so Sand didn't meet Mr. Brim's eyes as he lied to the big boss yet again. Uh, that needs to be a period, not a, not a comma. I did... I didn't bring my keys. I was told to just wait out here. Figured it might just be a pickup and not and not have anything to do with the store. With the store. Okay. The store, really. Uh, instead of maybe, I'm going to have him say might be. Might be. Might be so. Might be so, Don said, cupping his hands and looking into the darkness beyond the glass. Stan prayed that the dummies back there wouldn't crack the storeroom door and let the light out. Don pulled away from the glass, now fogged now fogged in a patch. Now fogged in a patch from his breath. I was told the same thing. Stan did Okay. Stan did look at the boss after that. You were told to wait outside, sir? Don laughed a little again. Yeah, you think you're not important? Let me put a question mark there. 
yeah, you think you're not important? Me sitting up on my big seat. Um, in my big seat over everything. Yeah, you think you're not important? Me sitting on my big seat over everything and I still have assholes telling me where to go and where to wait to. Huh, Stan said. Who sent you the message? Don looked to the boy with eyes narrowed. Stan swallowed twice and turned his gaze to the concrete between his feet. Oh, sorry, that's none of my business, sir. I'm say sorry again. Make Stan into a little groveling, uh, little uh, groveling toady there. Oh, sorry, that's none of my business, sir. Sorry. I got my call from a burner, too. Some guy out on Perry's crew. I'd been waiting for a call. Not sure what they have... Not sure what they have you here for, though. Stan, Stan shrugged and shifted from foot to foot, trying to... Right, I'm going to put a comma there. Trying to get warm and to think. Um, he already felt like he had dug a deep hole and was still using the shovel. Still using the shovel to make it deeper. All right, let's see how that reads. Stan shrugged and shifted from foot to foot, trying to get warm and to think. He already felt like he had dug a deep hole, let's say for himself. and was still using the shovel to make it deeper. I'll say still using his mouth like a shovel to make it deeper. All right, I like that line better. That's good stuff. Looks like I know what I'm doing when I write a line like that. Don took a step closer and Stan um, you, no, let's just, I was going to make it fancy. Let's not do that. Don took a step closer and Stan fought the urge to take a step back. Stepping back was the act of a guilty man. Or was it? and wasn't sure what to do with his hands now. All right, so we're showing him being nervous because the guy is Robin is standing right next to him. Are you with Perry's crew now too? Um, no, sir. I'm, well, actually... I get passed around a bit. I've been here at the store mostly over the last couple months. Stan bit his lip and cursed himself inside his head. This place was a front that did no real business. Stan literally walked around inside starting... No, I don't need a comma there. Walked around inside starting and stopping repeater programs that created false impression, created the false impression of work. Uh, if such a thing were ever checked. He mostly played on his phone or listened to music. Um, while being paid. Okay, what he also did was poke around the storeroom and saw stuff he wasn't supposed to, stuff that had value. Um, let's say stuff you could pretty easily fit into a trunk, into the trunk space of a small car. Then he talked about it to Cam, who hatched a plan and brought on two dudes dumber than him. For the life of him, Stan couldn't remember 
why any of this had once made sense. All right, I think that's good. Let's just roll forward with this story now. The problem was that Stan had just revealed to the big boss his own connection to a building that was about to come up short, even if the other guys got out clean in time. He wished he could send some sort of message to tell them to leave everything. Stan might be connected to it and find himself disappearing, even if he weren't caught in the act. I am caught in the act, he thought. I'm standing here right now, the night the robbery went down. God help me. Even if he did text them, it would be an argument, which meant more messages. It also meant even if he convinced them to leave at all, they would be in there even longer. Um, he was damned any way he did it. All right, good stuff. Stan revealed... Stan realized Don was staring at him. He couldn't recall the last thing that was said or if the boss had asked him a question. Uh, let's say maybe all of it was painted across his face and Don had read him like a book. Uh, he had to say something, so he went to an old trick he used when he had ignored his parents. Uh, I don't know. Weird. Don nodded and looked about the darkened street. There were no lights near here. Stan wondered if that was by design. It is weird. I'm starting, to, I'm starting not to like it. Stan tried to swallow, but couldn't seem to get that process to work for him. Let's say any more. Um, Don placed a hand on Stan's shoulder, and every muscle tightened up until he felt his lower back give, felt his lower back give a thrill of pain. This might be the end. Son, who was it that called you from the, from a burner? Stan couldn't remember if he had said he was called or texted. He was thinking a text, but wasn't sure what he'd said out loud. What if the boss called to look at? What if the boss asked to look at it, at his phone? What if they looked what if they took him somewhere to ask him questions about a call that never really happened? Um, Stan licked his lips with a dry tongue and said, "Tommy, Tommy asked me to wait here." Now he was in deep. He ju he just picked the name Tommy because he knew three of them that worked right around him in the chain of command near the low levels where bottom feeders like him dwelled. Uh, the organization was sick with Tommy's. Everyone had a story about some crazy shit a guy named Tommy got into. There were a ton of Jeffs involved in the goings-on, too, now that Stan thought about it. Sometimes two Jeffs on the same job. Maybe he should have used the name Jeff. Um, all right. Which Tommy? Don asked. Of course he asked. There were t a ton of Tommy's. Uh, Stan opened his mouth and then paused. You know, I'm embarrassed to say, sir, but I didn't ask. Um, I assumed it was Tommy Handel, but I should have asked. Not sure who else would be texting me in the night about work. Damn, now he had, now he had said text. Now he had said text for sure. Let's say now he had for sure said it was a text. All right, there we go. All right, I like how this is going. Did he say call the first time? This whole thing was coming apart. He had succeeded in stalling Mr. Brim much longer than he thought he could. That was something. Uh, there are a lot of Tommies around, Don said. He took a step or two out to the edge of the sidewalk and examined the deserted street in both directions. Highway noise hummed back and forth from the raised interstate beyond the industrial, beyond this industrial park otherwise they had the place they had the area say they had the entire area the entire area to themselves for miles well them and the three other robbers back in the storeroom Tommy Handel 
was over Stan. Tommy Handel was, let's say, directly, directly over Stan. Everyone was over Stan, but Handel gave Stan most of his, his instructions. Um, he was part, uh, let's say, that Tommy was a low-level part of a crew run by a guy named Jeffrey. By a guy named Jeffrey, let's say, of course. Uh, Tommy was not going to back Stan's story, and he had and he had no text to go with it. I don't like this, Stan. He started to shake. Okay, let's say let's say Stan didn't like it one bit either comma and he started to shake harder as he stared at Don's back only a fraction of that shaking had to do with the cold uh, Don Brim took out a set of keys that could have rivaled the number of keys on a janitor's ring um, he started thumbing through he started thumbing through them Around the circle and approached the door with his head down. Now what? Did he try? Now what? Did Stan just try? Now what? Did Stan just try to stall him more? And how? Make up another text? Say he enjoyed the brisk night? Ask the man to go drinking or clubbing? Just give up and take the punishment here and now? Stan froze in place when he saw the sliver of light from the storeroom. I guess storeroom is one word, right? Da from the storeroom door now standing ajar. The three idiots had left out through the front instead of using the door in the back of the warehouse section. They had also left the damn light on. Um, Stan was definitely going to give up their names and addresses the moment the moment the boss's men started turning the screws on him. All right, let me reread that and make sure that's a sentence that makes sense. All right, uh, they they had also left the damn light on. Stan was definitely going to give up their names and addresses the moment the boss's men started turning the screws on him. All right. Um, hmm. Mon and Dando. Okay, you got a uh, mirror image. There's the missing just before. Uh, the tires on Don's Mercedes. Okay, I'm not even down there yet, but I'll uh, I'll get to that. Thank you for that note. Uh, Stan wished he had never met Cam or the others. He wished he was already dead instead of getting ready to die by the hands of really talented killers. Mr. Brim, Stan didn't know what he planned to say after that. The boss looked up from his mess of keys just as headlight glare. Uh, let's say a headlight glare. No. Nope. Just as the glare of headlights washed over and passed the building. An old silver Ford Escort picked up speed as it passed them and continued on toward the on ramp. Was there any worse? Get away car than that. Okay. No offense to Ford Escorts. I just think it's a funny line. Jesus Christ. The three of them literally drove right by the front of the store as they got away. They left Stan too, but that was sort of secondary at this point. More light spilled across them as another engine roared through the night. Um, or th there we go. That's fine. 
Oh, shit, Don said. This is it. Those little fuckers. He pulled a weapon from inside that padded coat. The piece looked to stand like a cannon on a small grip. The approaching headlights danced over the metal... Danced over the metal of... The long silver barrel. Would his gun be silver or would it be black? Let me take the color out. Danced over the... Over... The, let's say, piece. I don't know why I avoid just saying the word gun, uh, but maybe it has something to do with being on stream. I don't know. The piece, oh, I used piece twice. Okay. Um, all right. Let's just say it here. Okay. Okay, do I need, he pulled a weapon, so I need to say. All right, the firearm, we'll do that. All right, I'm making more of this paragraph than I need to, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Let's see if this makes sense. He pulled a weapon from inside the padded coat. The firearm looked to stand like a cannon on a small grip. The approaching headlights danced over the metal of the piece's long barrel like a show. Um, like a, let's say, laser show. Laser show. Is laser show one word? Nope. All right. Pretty good. Let's keep going. Don lifted the hand cannon in Stan's direction, and Stan... Okay, I need to put a comma there. And Stan just covered his head with both arms like a kid trying to turn invisible. Shots rattled off from behind him um, and echoed around the dark buildings like the music of war. Glass shattered in the unused second floor of the store. Uh, one of the tires on Don's... Oh, there. That's where the V goes. That's one of those situations where I see it even though it's not there. Thank you for pointing that out. One of the tires on Don's Mercedes flattened with a concussive burst. Then the back window of the car imploded into the back seat. Don spread his feet and crouched. He didn't return fire at first, but tracked the speeding vehicle, swiveling his aim away from Stan. Um... All right. I was going to put something else, but we'll leave it. Stan took out the keys he recall. Stan took out the keys he recalled telling Mr. Brim he hadn't brought with him, and made a move to open the door. The glass face of it. There you go. Let me fix that. A little typo. My life is full of typos. They are the bane of my existence. But that's what editing is for. The glass face of it had miraculously survived the onslaught so far, even with bullets still flying and a spread of holes in the brick all around the door. All around the door, let's say on both sides. No, it's just all around the door because it can be above the door too. Don finally worked his trigger. The weapon did sound like a cannon. Did sound, let's say, very much. Did sound very much like a cannon. Comma. And it roared into the night multiple times. The offending vehicle lost glass and took deep depressions in its black side. The passenger side airbag deployed. Let's say, I mean, I guess I'm implying that a bullet made it happen, but we, we're not going to specify. The passenger side airbag deployed for some reason. All right, we'll leave it at that. Could be a malfunction, could be anything. More than one person screamed along with the wheels as the speeding car veered from side to side as it passed. It gave a weird Doppler effect to the noise that Stan's stressed mind fixated on. Some kind of long gun tipped out of one of the windows and clattered onto the glass-strewn street. Let's say there would have been even more glass, except that the shooters, the shooters had 
their windows rolled down already. There we go. So make that clear that that's otherwise it doesn't really make sense that there's uh, bullets flying if they didn't roll down their windows. And then I got to explain that there's glass on the street too. The car hesitated as Mr. Brim kept his aim trained on it, but then the engine noise rose in intensity and the car rushed away. You missed me, Don growled low after it. Uh, Stan dropped his keys and bent over to pick them up. Don Brim seized the boy by his sleeve and dragged him away before he could retrieve them. My Don shouted, forget it. Come on. We need to get the hell out of here right now. Uh, Mr. Brim actually opened the passenger store for Stan. Um, I was going to make a comment about it being like a date, but I don't think that adds anything to the story. Mr. Brim actually opened the passenger door for Stan and shoved him in into the opening before he ran around the front of the luxury car missing its back glass let's say now missing now missing its back glass just sweep all that into the floor kid stan blinked a couple times as he huddled huddled into into his side open door I don't know what I was trying to say there, but I'm going to try and make the sentence make sense at least. Uh, Stan blinked a couple times as he huddled into the open door. At first, he thought Mr. Brim was referring to some of the broken glass. At first, he thought Mr. Brim was referring to some of the broken class. There were a couple fast food bags in the fine tan leather seat. Leather, let's say passenger seat. Stan did brush them into the floorboard and took, and took, uh, took the seat, took a seat. Okay, I used seat twice. Passenger seat and. Yeah, I'm just going to keep seat twice. I don't like it, but I'm going to do it that way for now. Stan did brush them into the floorboard and took a seat. The car was quite comfortable, even in the bitter cold and after being shot at. Stan would have figured Mr. Brim to be the kind of guy who wanted no food or drink in his ride. Um, there were several fast food cups. I think fast food's a compound word, yeah? No? Oh. No, I'm not going to put the dash in there. Several fast food cups resting in a number of different holders around the interior. The car started itself before Mr. Brim opened his door. He jumped in and was backing out uh, before Stan finally got his own. No, not. I don't want to use before twice. Let's use as. And was backing out as Stan finally got his own door closed. The back end shimmied as they tore down the road the opposite way of the shooters any chance you identified anyone in, anyone in that bmw stan hadn't even bothered to identify the type of car like don had done um like don it yeah, like don had done the guy had been cool and calm as he waited to take his shots stan was still thinking about the keys he'd dropped his house and car keys were on the ring now it might be in the now it might be the police who questioned him about why his keys were there questioned him let's say later questioned him later about why his keys were there he might be able to tell them he dropped them after work but then how did he get home for that matter how did he explain to mr brim about how he got how he got there tonight uber flying horse uh stan uh, let's say uber his mom dropped him off flying horse there we go that makes sense now stan tried again to swallow but quickly gave up but quickly gave up on that he croaked, no, sir, it happened really fast. That's all right, kid. 
no one really gets used to being shot at. It happens a whole lot less often these days than most people think from all those stupid TV shows and movies. Every wise guy that got out in the last few years now has a damn podcast or vlog where they talk about mob days like it is some sort of video game. Um, like it's some sort of video game, let's say competition. Effing crazy times, huh? Stan blinked as cold winds swirled through the car from the open back. They made a sharp turn through a stop sign, and the car felt like it was about to spin out from under them. Don wavered in and out of his lane. Damn flat tire. We'll have to deal with that. We'll have to deal with it later. I need to make a couple calls, but we're going to pay a few bastards a visit while they might still think I didn't get away. We are... We sure are, Stan. We sure are. I'm not positive why they involved you. Must have something to do with the store. They wanted us both found there. Must, ha must have to do with the stash. I knew it was going to be trouble from the start, but wealth is always a, let's say, tempting risk. Let's say the promise of real wealth is always a tempting risk. There you go. Yes, sir. Did you know what was in there? Uh, Stan glanced at the boss and then away. It's okay if you did. Yes, sir. I may have caught a glimpse. All right. That's fine. They must have wanted to pin my death on you somehow. Tie it all in there to cover their tracks. Um, if this revenge is mine. It is partly yours too. We were both shot at tonight, weren't we? All right, I like that. So it kind of explains why this guy's driving around with him. He somehow feels a kinship to him. They're both shot at, so he feels like they should both get revenge. Stan didn't answer. Don slowed down as he made the next turn. First, we're tracking down Armand. Maybe he called, or maybe it was someone posing as him, but it sure sounded like him. I'll know if he's lying when he tries to pass it off. Then we'll see what Tommy Handel has to say for himself. Stan took a shaky breath. Could have been another Tommy or someone else, sir. Probably, but we're going to be most of the way to the answers. Let's say most of the way to the answers of who had it in for us. Uh, let's say one way or the other. Before this night is over. All right. I promise you that, buddy. They say revenge is a dish best served cold but I find that sometimes if you don't let your enemies have a chance to catch their breath or regroup, then you can catch them on their heels. That's sure what I plan to do before God. That's my plan. You know, let's let's include uh, poor little Stan in this. All right, I'm going to reread that short paragraph and make sure it makes sense. We're almost to the end here. Probably, but we're going to be most of the way to the answers of who had it in for us one way or the other before this night is over. I promise you that, buddy. They say revenge is a dish best served cold. All right, I'm going to put a comma there. But I find that sometimes if you don't let your enemies have a chance to catch their breath or regroup, then you can catch them on their heels. That's sure. Uh, catch them on their heels with their 
pants down and their uh, peckers hanging out. That's sure what I plan. That's sure what I plan to do before God. That's our plan. Uh, yeah, let's put Stan here because it rhymes. That's our plan, Stan. All right. Last three paragraphs. Don slowed down a little. I need to ditch this car for now. There's a lot up ahead. There's a... Let's see, there's a fenced... There's a fenced lot up ahead where I can switch out for a company car. Hey, Oracle, thanks for dropping in. Um, I'll get this one fixed up later. Then we're going to fix. Uh, then we're going to fix all the traders. Stan gave a shuddering sigh. I know this is this wasn't what you expected tonight, Stan. But sometimes we're baptized in water, sometimes in fire. But eventually, we all wade through blood if we live long enough. All of us. Stan closed his eyes and tried to stop thinking for a while. Uh, let's say because all he could think about were all the holes in his story that would eventually have to be filled.